Hello there. So this is part two video of chronic otitis media, and in that the subtype tubotuberic disease or the safe type. So we are going to deal or discuss or I am going to tell you mainly about the management that is medical management and surgical management how we are going to deal with that. Now um, the, the management depends upon the stage of the disease whether it is in the active stage or whether it is in the inactive stage. Active stage means there is active infection there is pus discharge inactive stage means there is no pus discharge at all there is no infection so always in the act when the patient is in the active stage we will prefer only medical management and with the full medical management the patient becomes okay and he goes into the inactive stage we will go ahead and do the surgery if the patient is willing now first let us see the medical management so there is pus discharge so we have to first take a swab ear swab of the ear discharge to send it for culture sensitivity so that we can know which bacteria is involved and which specific antibiotic can be given for that followed by that we will do a complete ear cleaning which can be done with the help of an auto endoscopy on the visualization or with the help of a microscope. Once that is done we will advise you to use antibiotic ear drops 3 drops 3 times daily for 5 days and and or oral antibiotic twice or thrice daily for 7 days. Along with that you will be given nasal decongestion drops or spray that is to be used 3 times daily and if the patient gives a history of severe nasal allergy we will give uh, antihistamine tablets for a short duration and we would like to we would prefer nasal steroid nasal spray that has to be taken 2 puffs on both uh, nasal cavity nostrils 2 puffs twice daily at least for a period of 3 weeks. So along this is a full medical management along with that there is a small advice that whenever you take a head shower you have to use a plug the ear with a cotton cotton and on top of it you have to apply Vaseline so that water does not enter the ear this is a must this will go on until we tell you not to do that. Now uh, second thing is you have to avoid swimming in case you are not you cannot avoid then you have to use a ear plug and if you if there is any upper respiratory tract infection kindly meet the nearest doctor and get it treated at the earliest. Now coming to the next treatment option. So there is one patient one group of patient the patient says that we do not want to go undergo surgery in that case a regular follow up in the case in the sense whenever the patient has got infection we will advise him to come and come and see us then just observation alone. The next group we have patient who is willing for surgery. So in that case we should decide what type of surgery we are going to do for him. So that depends upon his hearing loss. Suppose his hearing loss is less than 40 it means in the middle ear there are 3 small bones the all the 3 small bones in the middle ear they are intact. If suppose the hearing loss is more than 40 decibels it means the 3 small bones one of the bones or more than that maybe it has got necrosis and it is uh, so there is more hearing loss there is discontinuity in the in the uh, ossicular chain resulting in more hearing loss in that case we need to do a tympanoplasty in means you have to when we do the surgery we have to examine the middle ear to have a look so examining the middle ear also at the same time is called tympanoplasty tympanum means middle cleft tympanoplasty and if you need to reconstruct the ossicular chain pain then we we would like to do ossiculoplasty tympano ossiculoplasty. So if it is less than 40 decibels then we will go ahead and we will repair only the tympanic membrane or the eardrum which is called as myringoplasty. Now we have decided for a surgery and patient been admitted for that we will first we will take a concern. In the concern paper it will be written with the diagnosis and what type what surgery we are going to do and what approach and what are the complications. So coming to the complications the common ones are bleeding from the ear, secondary infection maybe it is bacterial or viral, slight dizziness may be there and recurrence uh, the failure uh, the failure of the failure of surgery means the perforation will be still there and uh, recurrence of it. Now these are the common complications. 
So once you have read all the complications and gone through it, you have to sign, the patient needs to sign uh, uh, and write his name and date. Likewise, the, the bystander or the witness, there is one should, we need one witness to sign with you and the doctor who is there along with you, he will do the same thing. At the same time, all the pre-anesthesia workup or all the necessary investigations which is necessary to make you uh, fit to be taken to the operation theatre will be done and the, all the reports could have been ready by this time. With all these reports, you need to meet the physician to get a clearance for surgery. Likewise, with that report, you have to meet the anesthetist to get the clearance for sur surgery, whether you are fit for the anesthesia or not. So, next day is operation and today after dinner, say and now, especially after 12 o'clock, you are not supposed to drink or eat anything. So, next day is the surgery and uh, the, the usual routine time duration for the surgery is say less than 2 hours. And the, but the time you spend in the operation theatre will be 3 hours. That includes the anesthesia procedures and the staff nurse, how they were, uh, the, the arrangement of the operation theatre. So it will be less than 3 hours. Now here I will, I like to tell you that our aim of surgery is to close this perforation. One, to improve the hearing. Two, by doing all, both this we achieve that the, the discharge will be stopped. Ear discharge which you have been complaining, it will stop. Now, the approach for surgery, one, we can do with the help of an endoscope and two, we can do post-oral, behind there we put a big incision. Now, I like to tell you that to close this perforation, you need a material and in case we do it with an endoscope, we will take the material from this tragus. So, there will not be any external scar. So, it is called as endoscopic tympanoplasty or tympanoarsculoplasty. In case it is done post orally, then the graft is taken from once it is incised, then we take a graft from there. And this is the next step where the graft is taken and we will put in the graft just below the perforation so that it heals. Now the surgery is over and you are coming back to your room or general ward. For the next 4 hours, you are not supposed to drink or eat anything. Meanwhile, IV drip will be going on and the staff nurse will check your vitals. IV fluids and painkillers will be going on. And if suppose we have done post oral approach like the incision behind the, uh, behind the ear, then the bandage will be like this. It is called as a mastoid bandage. In case we are doing it by the endoscopic approach, there will be just a wig or a wig inside and followed by a cotton here and there will be a plaster here. Now, the next day, when there is no, no associated complication, next day morning you will be discharged with the following advice. That is, antibiotic has to be taken for 5 to 7 days, painkillers for 2 to 3 days, followed by if you have pain, you need to take one painkiller and nasal drops or spray 3 times daily, the nasal decongestants and steroid nasal spray 2 puff twice daily at least for 3 weeks. Now, your first review is going to be after 1 week. So, after one week, we will have a look, one, one week to 10 days I can say, we will have a look and we will remove the pack, ear wig which is kept inside. Once this is, ear wig is removed, these are the advice which we will give you, we will tell you. One is keep on, you continue using the ear plug, the cotton followed by application of uh, Vaseline or Biolin during the head shower so that water does not enter the ear. This should go on till we will tell you, till it is completely healed. Usually the operation side inside the eardrum, it takes about 6 weeks to 2 months to heal. So meanwhile you have to, this waiting period you have to uh, follow all these instructions. One I have already told you using earplug, second is earplug in the sense cotton and applying vaseline is more than enough. Second one treat upper respiratory tract infection immediately, so that the infection from the nose does not go to the ear. Third, sneeze with your open mouth. Why? Because if you sneeze through the nose, what happens? The pressure builds up behind the nose and the graft which is kept inside may get rejected. That means in short, it will be a failure for surgery. And avoid air travel till we tell you in the sense at least for 2 to 3 months. And not only that, even after 2 to 3 months, before the air travel, you have to meet us to see uh, how well it has healed. Not only that, we will give you a few instructions and we will give you some medication which has to be taken. Uh, before air travel. That is why. And the last one, you have to avoid any sort of body straining, like lifting any heavy weight, lifting a bucket full of water, then shifting heavy furnitures, 
and being in the sun for a long time and doing some strenuous exercise, all this, uh, any sort of strain which increases the ear pressure has to be avoided because in the pressure air, middle ear pressure increases automatically the, the graft gets rejected. That is, uh, this is how we manage a case of uh, tuber tumenic disease and one thing I will tell you, this uh, operation which I have told you all for moderate to large central perforation or subtotal perforation, large perforation you can understand. Now, sometimes what happened the patient, the patient will present to us and when we examine there will be only a small perforation. In that case for a small perforation what we do is, we in the OPD itself if the patient is cooperative we used to cauterize the edges. That will help in healing. That is one. Once we cauterize, we'll advise you use use ear drops also for five days. Another option is we'll take a little lobule of fat from here, from the ear lobule, and we'll uh, clear up the edges of the small perforation, and just plug in the fat which is taken from here, which is called as pop in myringoplasty. This also can be done in the OPD, which can be done in the OPD or uh, outpatient uh, procedure department or if the patient is not cooperative, we can do in the operation theatre also. So this is for small perforations. For the large perforation, the surgery I have already mentioned. So this is how we manage chronic autodesmedia, the safe type. Thank you so much.